uh, next we ha we're going to go the rights of the rights of human beings with um, brother Hafiz uh, Rakin Mukamil Chaudhry. I don't. I'm not really sure. Mukamil Chaudhry. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. As Brother Hassan pointed out, I will be speaking today about the rights of all human beings. So we've spoken about the rights of siblings and, and parents and children, but now it's the rights of general all human beings. So first is um, talking about the right to life um, in Surah number 5, verse 32. مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever kills a soul unless for a soul or for corruption done in the land, it is as if he had slain mankind entirely. And whoever saves one is as if, as if he had saved mankind entirely. So this verse from the Quran uh, demonstrates the right to live and right to life for all humans as um, someone who upholds that right by saving a human would it would be as if he had saved all of mankind which is obviously a very good deed and then um, also someone who obstructs that someone who breaks that right by killing a human it is as if he has killed all mankind which is also a very great sin um, speaking on the same topic in surah 6 verse number 151 وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And do not kill the soul which, which Allah has forbidden to be killed except by legal right. So basically, we have no right to kill uh, an innocent person unless we have been given right. So an example of this would be in warfare, you know, you, if you have to defend yourself, you might be allowed to kill someone. But we have no right to kill an innocent person and it is a great sin and we are forbidden to do so. Um, Next, on the right to the safety of life, um, in the verse before mentioned, Surah, Surah 5, verse number 32, And whoever saves a life is as though he had saved the lives of all mankind. So just um, the same point as made before, you know, if you save a life, it's as if you saved all mankind, which is a great um, good deed. and. It is because you're you're protecting a human life, and every human has the right to life. And um, in Surah 3, verse 75, لَيْسَ عَلَيْنَا فِي الْأُمِّينَ سَبِيلٍ There is no blame upon us concerning the unlearned. So if there's someone who doesn't really know, and who, who, who isn't learned, and he does something wrong, there is no blame upon them. Uh, next is a hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 18. Um, uh, it is narrated by Ubada bin As-Samit who testified that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Bayi'uni ala an la tushrik Bayi'uni ala an la tushrik billahi shri'a wa la tasrifu wa la wa la taznu wa la taqtulu awladakum وَلَا تَأْتُوا بِبُهْتَانٍ تَفْتَرُونَهُ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَأَرْجُلِكُمْ وَلَا تَعْصُوا فِي مَعْرُوفٍ فَمَنْ وَفِي مِنْكُمْ فَمَنْ وَفَى مِنْكُمْ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَمَنْ أَصَابَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ شَيْئًا فَعُوقِبَ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَهُوَ كَفَّارَةٌ لَهُ وَمَنْ أَصَابَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ شَيْئًا ثُمَّ سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنْ شَاءَ عَفَا عَنْهُ وَإِنْ شَاءَ عَاقَبَ so, um, narrated by Ubadah bin as samit who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Swear allegiance to me, not to join anything in worship along with Allah, not to steal, not to commit illegal sexual intercourse, not to kill your children, not to accuse an innocent person to spread such an accusation among people, not to be disobedient when ordered to do a good deed. Um, so, these are these points are all talking uh, are related to the right to safety of life as the fourth one is not to kill your children and also there's one that says not to steal these are um, orders from the Prophet Sallallahu he is asking his companions to pledge these things to him so basically you must pledge not to steal you know no, no human should be stolen from and everyone has the right to their own property 
and not to kill your children because a child has the right to life just like any other human being and not to accuse an innocent person because they they have the right to um, be considered innocent if they have not committed any wrong you don't you're not allowed to accuse them um, and not to be disobedient when ordered to do good uh, to do a good deed you know if someone tells you to, to uh, someone asks you to do something that is good then you should be obedient and you should listen to them and um, the next uh, is is a verse from the Quran chapter Surah 17 verse number 32 uh, about the respect for the chastity of women and do not approach unlawful sexual intercourse which is uh, pretty self-explanatory basically you know don't go near any unlawful sexual intercourse and speaking uh, in the same subject on respect for chastity is another verse from the Quran um, Surah Nur Verses 30 to 31. <laughs> وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمْرِهِنَّ عَلَى جُيُوبِهِنَّ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا لِبُعُولَتِهِنَّ أَوْ آبَائِهِنَّ أَوْ آبَاءِ بُعُولَتِهِنَّ أَوْ آبَاءِ بُعُولَتِهِنَّ أَوْ أَبْنَائِهِنَّ أَوْ أَبْنَاءِ بُعُولَتِهِنَّ أَوْ أَبْنَاءِ بُعُولَتِهِنَّ أَوْ إِخْوَانِهِنَّ أَوْ بَنِي إِخْوَانِهِنَّ أَوْ بَنِي أَخَوَاتِهِنَّ أو بني أخواتهن أو نسائهن أو ما ملكت أيمانهن أو التابعين غير أولي الإربة من الرجال أو الطفل الذين لم يظهروا على عورات النساء ولا يضربن بأرجلهن ليعلم ما يخفين من زينتهن وتوبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون uh, the meaning of this, these verses are tell the believing men to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts. That is pure for them. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what they do. And tell the believing women to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts and not to not expose their adornment except that which necessarily appears thereof. And to wrap a portion of their head covers over their chests and not to expose their adornment except to their husbands, their fathers, their husbands' fathers, their sons, their husbands' sons, their brothers, their brothers' sons, their sisters' sons, their women, that which their right hands possess, or those male attendants having no physical desire, or children who are not yet aware of the private aspects of women, and let them not stamp their feet to make known what they conceal of their adornment, and turn to Allah in repentance, all of you, O believers, that you might succeed. So these verses are um, talking about how a man shouldn't look at a woman in the wrong a woman in the wrong way, and to like uh, not to lower the gaze and you know be like j just don't do anything unlawful and uh, telling the same to women to like cover some of their um, private parts with their garments and to reduce some of their vision to um, and not to expose their adornment except to um, people who are like close relatives to them like uh, their fathers, their husbands, fathers, their sons, and all the relatives mentioned in the verses, and um, and the the verse ends with uh, turn to Allah and repentance, all of you, O believers, that you might succeed. So, um, following these commands by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we should not um, we should not you know gaze upon a man or a woman in the wrong way, and we should always be lawful in our actions and repent to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala so we might succeed. Uh, next is a verse from Surah 51, ayat number 19, the right to, uh, based on the right to a basic standard of life. And in their wealth there is acknowledged right for the needy and the destitute. So this is talking about how those who are needy of wealth and um, those who don't have the same ability to provide for themselves or their families, they have a right to um, a certain amount of wealth. So for, for for anyone's wealth, we should all, always give to the needy. And this is of course, is zakah and charity, which is a pillar of Islam, you know, to give to those who need the money because all humans have a right to a basic standard of life. 
Um, next is a hadith um, in Sahih al Bukhari, hadith number 2227, about the individual's right to freedom. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله ثلاثة أنا خصمهم يوم القيامة ومن كنت خصمه خصمته يوم القيامة رجل أعطابي ثم غدر ورجل باع حر حرا فأكل ثمنه ورجل تأجر أجيرا فاستوف منه ولم يوفه أجره uh, narrated by Abu Huraira, the Prophet وسلم, said, Allah says, I will be against three persons on the day of resurrection. One who makes a covenant in my name, but he proves treacherous. Uh, the second person is one who sells a free person as a slave and eats the price. And the third person is one who employs a laborer and gets the full work done by him, but does not pay him in his wages. So first is, of course, someone who um, makes a covenant in Allah's name. And, does, and proves to be treacherous, so someone who like um, bears witness to Allah and becomes a Muslim but uh, proves to be treacherous. And for, uh, after the, that, the, um, the hadith mentions two people that Allah will be against on the day of resurrection is one person who sells a, a free person, uh, sells a slave and eats the price. So he sells a person and like consumes all the benefits, all the money that he gets in return. He uses it all for himself. Free person. Who sells, person who sells a free person as a slave, who sells them into slavery and takes all the benefits for himself. And then one who employs a laborer and gets the full work done by him but does not pay the wages. So basically, if you employ someone to do work for you and you don't pay them, so everyone, of course, like the laborer and the free person, they have the right to freedom. And if you go against that right, it is a great sin. Um, next is a, a verse from the Quran, Surah number 5, verse number 2. The right to justice. Wala yajri manna kum shanaan qawmin an saddu kum anil masjid al harami an taatadu, and to not let the hatred of a people for having obstructed you from al masjid al haram lead you to transgress. So basically, um, you know, during the time of the Prophet, there was obviously a lot of hatred for those people who were persecuting the Muslims. But Allah is commanding in the Quran here not to let that hatred lead them to transgress. So always be just, no matter how much hatred you might have, always be um, and be just. Um, and the next verse is on the same topic, um, Surah 5, verse number 8. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu kunu qawwameena lillahi shuhada bil qist wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'adilu i'adilu wa aqrabu littaqwa O you who have, who have believed, be persistently standing firm for Allah, witnesses injustice, and do not let the hatred of a people prevent you from being just. Be just, that is near to righteousness, and fear Allah, indeed Allah is acquainted with what you do. So here again Allah is commanding the Muslims, um, those who have believed, um, to always stand firm and uh, with Allah and be just. Uh, just like the previous verse mentioned, to always be just, and um, the reasoning is that it is near, it is near to righteousness, and always to fear Allah because Allah knows about everything that we do. So we should always be righteous and always be just. And um, stressing the, stressing this point, the Quran again says um, in Surah number four, verse number one hundred thirty-five. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ بِالْقِسْطِ شُهَدَاءَ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ إِنْ يَكُنْ غَنِيًّا أَوْ فَقِيرًا فَاللَّهُ أَوْلَى بِهِمَا فَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا الْهَوَىٰ أَنْ تَعْدِلُوا وَإِنْ تَلْوُوا أَوْ تُعْرِضُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا be, persi be persistent in standing firm in justice, witnesses for Allah, even if it be against yourselves or your parents and relatives. Whether one is rich or poor, Allah is more worthy of both, so follow not personal incl inclination, lest you not be just. And if you distort your testimony or refuse to give it, then indeed Allah is ever with what you do acquainted. So speaking about the same thing, you know, always be just, it is just elaborating in many parts of the Quran, you know, always be just, and um, in this part it says, even if it be against yourselves or parents or relatives. 
So, you know, always be righteous and just in your actions. Even if it's against your own relatives or yourself, you, uh, Allah is commanding you to be just. And if you refuse to do so, just know that Allah is always acquainted with what you do. He is aware of what you are doing. And then, hmm. next is um, a verse from the Quran, Surah 49, Ayah number 13. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ And this is, this is a verse speaking about the equality of all human beings. Uh, it means, and we set you up as nations and tribes so that you may be able to recognize each other. Indeed, the noblest among you before God are the most heedful of you. So, basically it is talking about how there are multiple nations in the world and Allah sees them Allah sees them all as the same ex except for um, whoever is the noblest among you is, is the most heedful. So he set, uh, Allah set us up as all nations amongst each other so that we can see each other and recognize each other for who we are and what we do. And Allah sees who is the most heedful of him and who is the most mindful of him. And um, we are, uh, those are the noblest among us. Um, next is a hadith from Al-Bayhaqi and Al-Bazaz. Um, it is narrated that um, Abi Nadra said that the Prophet sallallahu said, "Ya ayyuha nasu ala inna Rabbikum wahid wa inna abakum wahid ala la fadlu li Arabi ala ajami wa la li ajami ala Arabi wa la li ahmar ala aswad wa la aswad ala ahmar illa bi taqwa." So um, the, 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 ala, uh, Abi Nadra said that the Prophet ﷺ said, no Arab has any superiority over a non-Arab, nor does any a non-Arab have any superiority over an Arab, nor does a white man have any superiority over a black man, nor does a black man any superiority over the white man, except in piety. So basically, the Prophet ﷺ is speaking about how all humans are equal. In the eyes of Allah, we are all, we are all made equal, and we are all equal except in um, piety, except in who is most mindful of Allah and who is in the most who is the most righteous and um, next is the verse from the Quran Surah 5 uh, verse number 2 about the right to cooperate and not to cooperate and cooperate in righteousness and piety but do not cooperate in sin and aggression so this um, verse on the Quran is telling us that we are allowed to cooperate with others as long as it is in righteousness and piety but we should not cooperate in sin and aggression so we can be with um, other believers and we can see what we could be with righteous people and cooperate in what they do but we should not be with those who are um, wrongdoers and who um, sin uh, who are sinful and we should not cooperate in their actions and that's the rights of all human beings um, brother thank you brother Hafiz uh, Ratlin Chaudhary he helped us and he explained many aspects of the rights of all human beings he told us how we all have the right to life he told us the great magnitude it's as if you know killing one is as if you killed all of mankind saving one is almost as if you saved all mankind and encouraging the saving of lives in Islam we learn about many other rights of all human beings you know how they have a basic standard to life um, and especially near the end we learned about the equality of all human beings how no one man is superior to the other except in terms of their spiritual deeds and their piety Alhamdulillah